Hello everyone. Today I am going to give a talk on our paper Boomerang Embedding EO within Boomerang and its application to key recovery attacks on AES and Falcos. This is a joint work with Dr. Dhiman Sai and Dr. Gautam Paul. So as we all know, cryptanalysis is a way of determining the strength of crypto systems. And in this work, we have devised a new cryptanalytic technique, Boomerang, which is based on two very important cryptanalysis techniques, which were introduced almost 20 years apart. One is the boomerang attack which was introduced in 1999 and another is the yo-yo attack on SPN cipher which was introduced in 2017. And like boomerang attack and the yo-yo attack, the boomerang attack is also based on adaptive fusion cipher test pen test model. So first let's dis discuss briefly about both the boomerang attack. So boomerang attack occurs in the adaptive fusion pen test cipher test setting and it is based on divide and conquer paradigm. So the idea behind boomerang attack is that if we are not able to penetrate the whole cipher using the differential attack, so what we do, we try to compose to different differential trails and merge them and try to penetrate more number of rounds. So as we can see, typically a cipher E is divided into two sub ciphers E1 and E0. And by employing the boomerang attack, we are trying to find a quartet of structures P1, P2, P3, P4, which will satisfy some properties. So for the E0 part, suppose there is a differential with probability P from alpha to beta and for the E1 part, there is a differential from gamma to delta, which occurs with probability Q. So over the whole cipher, we try to find a two pairs or a quartet structure. So we start with P1, P2 and in the end we obtain P3 and P4 which will satisfy some properties and we will see now what properties it is going to uh, satisfy. So initially we start with a pair of plain text P1 and P2 which has defense alpha and we encrypt them to obtain C1 and C2. Next we add delta difference to both C1 and C2 to obtain C3 and C4 and we decrypt them to obtain P3 and P4. Now, what is happening in the boundary of E0 and N1, that is our main interest. So as you can see, so over the E0, alpha is transited to beta difference. And over E1, delta is transited to gamma difference. So if this is the case, so here the difference is gamma, here the difference is beta, here the difference is gamma. So in that case, the difference here should be beta. And if the difference is beta here, then there is also a, there is a probability that this difference will transit to alpha difference. Now the hypothesis is that we start with a pair of plain text P1, P2 with alpha difference and we will get a pair of plain text P3, P4 with the same difference. Now what is the probability of such distinguishers? So for this plane, we need to pay the probability of P and for these two differentials, for these two plane, we need to pay the probability of Q square and again we have to pay the probability of P for this plane. So in total we have to pay the probability of P square Q square. Now in the boomerang attack, it is assumed that the two trails, the upper trail and the lower trail, these are independent. But later it has been shown that by Murphy that actually sometimes the, these two trails are not independent. There is some dependency between them. And uh, it has been shown that some uh, attacks have been reported, but later it is shown that uh, those attacks are incompatible. Now, this dependency between the upper trail and lower trail can be exploited further to mount a uh, better attacks or to paint a more number of rounds. And this is exploited in the form of S-box switch, ladder switch, pistol switch, and middle round S-box switch. And these dependencies are more generalized in the sandwich attack. So in the sandwich attack, in addition of E0 and E1, there is another part that is the EM part which is sandwiched between E0 and E1. Now EM captures the dependency between the upper trail and the lower trail. And for that EM part, our probability is incurred. So this, the whole probability of this framework is P square Q square and R. So in the left side, the framework for boomerang attack is shown and on the right side, the framework for sandwich attack is shown. 
and as we can see in the boomerang attack e0 and e1 is only there whereas in the case of sandwich attack in between e0 and e1 em is sandwiched now what happens actually with the em layer if we consider em as the s box layer then some important properties pops up so here this here the upper trail ends and from here the lower trail it starts so this is basically our em layer now in the em layer there are two plain text so consider here the, these are bytes so this consider this as a 8 bit s box so this this is the in one byte and then there is this difference a is there and this is the another byte and both of these uh, are passes through the s box layer to obtain sx and sx x or a so there is some difference between them and b is added to both of them to obtain these two parts and then these are again decrypted now what is the probability that x dash and x dash double dash should be a we have to find that so if this is our typical boomerang framework if there is no dependency so mm, the probability uh, that this s box should have uh, over this differential that should be squared for this probability however there are some special cases occur when this probability is much better than this so now first of all for the case of ladder switch now we want here the probability a but in the ladder switch the b is zero so that essentially means that this value is exactly this one and this value is exactly this one so in this case the probability of x x dash x dash x or x double dash equals to a is one so that means in the case of ladder switch this occurs with probability one now in the case of s box switch this b is actually the difference between sx x or sx uh, x or a so the difference here is exactly the same as the value of b so in that case this value is actually this one and this value is actually this one so again that means that these two values are just interchanged in this from from the here so again here this a occurs deterministically under the condition that this b is actually this difference so again we don't need to pay the probability for this plane we have to pay the probability for this plane now we move to the second part of our attack so the yo attack which is again occurs in the adaptive chosen plane test cipher test setting and it looks quite similar to the boomerang attack so initially we take a plane text pair with alpha difference we encrypt then using the round radius cipher to obtain c1 and c2 with beta difference we do some operation which is known as word swap which we will see later what this actually what operation is this one and we obtain c1 dash and c2 dash and the difference between c1 and c2 dash is exactly the same as this one so this should be again beta and we then decrypt them to obtain p1 dash and p2 dash and we take the difference delta between them now we see that new of alpha is exactly new of delta now what is this new we have to see that so first of all how can we choose alpha in the previous in this attack so we have to choose the alpha based on some zero defense pattern and these are all answered in the asa kit paper by ronjo et al and the round reduce cipher is actually two round generic substitution permutation networks and the swap works on based on the nonlinear layer and this new is the actually the zero defense pattern so ranjam et al uh, reported the attack and devised the deterministic distribution for two generic substitution permutation rounds so and they use their results to mount first key independent yo distinguishers for aes and they also mounted a five round practical key recovery attack now what is this what's our operation so consider this two aes states and as you can see these are uh, the states we have uh, actually grouped the diagonals the bytes in the diagonals are grouped together 
now if we interchange the diagonals between these two cipher text this operation is known as what swap operation and the zero difference pattern so we take two plain text again uh, aes state is considered here so we take two states we take their difference and we pattern the we uh, construct a pattern based on their diagonals so if we see this diagonal the bytes here are active so we, uh, we consider this diagonal as the active one and all other diagonals are inactive so the first diagonal is active that is why it is that is noted denoted by zero and as the all diagonals are inactive these are denoted by one and thus the weight of this zero defense pattern is three So the UAO attack, it uh, it constructs new pairs of plain text and separate text uh, adaptively from the original pairs, and while making the pairs, we keep certain property as invariant, and at the end of the attack, at the end of the game, we verify whether the invariant property is hold uh, the holds or not. So our main motivation behind devising the boomerang attack is to merge the UAO attack with the boomerang one. So in the left side, the framework for UA attack is shown, whereas in the right side, the framework for boomerang attack is shown. So the, the UA attack is more of a deterministic one, and it is more related to some patterns instead of actual differences, whereas the boomerang attack is a probabilistic one, and is related to actual differences. So now, in the context of boomerang attack, we need to revisit the words of operation again. So in the earlier, we see the words of operation as the swap of some words based on some diagonals or inverse diagonals. Now, we can see it in some other ways also. So here, we divide the cipher text into two parts. The part that are required to be swapped and the parts that are not required to be swapped. So the parts that will be swapped are subscripted by omega s and the parts that are not to be swapped are subscripted by omega l and the and this part the part subscripted by omega s are interchanged between the two cipher text and in this way the new cipher text are created and the difference between them is beta omega s and beta omega l so this operation can be visualized as adding the difference beta omega s to this cipher text to these parts to the parts that are needed to be sub, uh, interchanged Whereas, the part beta omega L, uh, that is not added to this part, instead 0 is added to this part. So basically, we can consider this as a combination of S-box switch and ladder switch. So the, these parts, we, we, we uh, apply here the S-box switch operation and in this way, we just interchange the values here. And for this part, we apply here the ladder switch operation. And in this way, these parts remain the same. And in this way, we create the new pairs of cipher texts. So in this way, we can actually visualize the words of operation as a combination of ladder switch and S-box switch. Now, mm, this is shown the difference between the two words. Uh, not the difference, the similarity between the two words of operation is shown here in this figure. So this is the... Uh, typical words of operation and here the words of operation is shown as a combination of S-box switch and ladder switch and these two are essentially the same. Now we in addition to the words of operation and the UO part over uh, in the upper upper part of the trail in the lower part we try to add the uh, boomerang kind of strategy. So we start from alpha difference with uh, uh, the two pairs of uh, with the pairs of plain text p1 p2 and we reach here with probability p and from here for the lower part we add here the delta difference and somehow if we are able to do here the what's of operation so we add here such delta differences such that some what's of operations occurs here so in that case we know that this part will satisfy the yo-yo game and thus, this will occur with probability 1, the alpha days, and the new of alpha will, will be equals to new of alpha days. So, in this case, we have to pay the probability 
for this part we have to pay the probability of p and for this two trace we have to pay the probability of q square and for and this will occur deterministically so this film works increase the probability to p square q uh, p q square instead of p square q square so it is shown here as p square q this wrong now the boomerang attack uh, the uh, technique the framework that we have developed it's we applied it on five round aes six round aes and ten round fall cost so first we'll we have devised a distinguishing attack and then we have uh, extend the attack to mount key recovery attack and then we have uh, mounted key recovery attack on six round aes and quite similar to the attack on aes we have mount uh, key recovery attack on ten round fall cost so first of all for the distinguishing attack find on uh, aes we have to first identify the upper trail so this is our upper trail in the uh, attack for five round aes so as we can see there are six bytes these are free and this bytes is we have marked it as red uh, so this is a special byte we'll see where, uh, in the later case why this uh, special one and all these bytes are active bytes now this this value occurs with probability to the minus 48 and as shown here, there are four, four instances of such occurrences. So this is uh, one such case and there are four, uh, three other cases. So in total, uh, if any of this occurs, uh, our upper trail, uh, and this is the sufficient condition for uh, occurrence of the upper trail. So the community probability of, uh, of all this is 2 to the minus 46. Now we need to devise the lower trail. So consider here to cipher text. Okay. So how we are actually constructing the delta. So for the lower part, we uh, this is our lower trail. So we have included the mixed column operation and the last round. Now, how this delta difference is created? So as you can see, so only the uh, this inverse diagonal is active here. Other values are zero. And how this inverse diagonal is created? This this value. Sorry, sorry. sorry. This value is actually the difference between these two values. In similar way, this value is the difference of this value and this value. So in this way, the delta is created. Now, we add this delta to C1 to obtain C3 and this delta is added to C2 to obtain C4. Now when this delta will be added to C1, this will be the new ciphertext. So as you can see, these are actually the this a part of this cipher text and this value comes from this this cipher text so essentially this means that we are actually interchanging the inverse diagonal of this two plain text of this two cipher text and uh, what effect does the e1 layer have so uh, over the e1 layer if we are uh, this four bytes are actually only dependent of this four bytes so if we are changing these four bytes this essentially means that we are only changing these four bytes in the internal round. So this is our uh, framework for realizing the words of operation in the middle. So as we can, as we have seen in the last slide, we are interchanging only this inverse diagonal. So this essentially means that in the internal round, we are interchanging only the last column of this to internal states now the case that we have considered that this six bytes will be act inactive in the difference so if these are the two states these two by uh, these six bytes will be act uh, will be equal now that means that if we are changing these two columns that means that this two uh, these two bytes will only be changed because these are actually same values. So it will have no effect on the difference. So that means that only these two values will be changed. And this means that these two diagonals, inverse diagonals are changed. That is very important case for our attack. So when these six bytes are uh, equal, at that time the column swap is essentially means that it is equal equivalent to the inverse diagonal swap. And this is uh, result is actually derived from theorem 5 and theorem 6 in, uh, uh, from the paper uh, by Barde and Anjom from ACKIP 2019.
So this is the distinguishing attack on 5 round AS. So this is our upper trend. So we start with such alpha and we expect such uh, beta occurs in the middle with probability to the minus 46. And from the lower part, we give here such delta. And if this is the case has occurred in the middle, then this case occurs with probability 1. And at that time, the values will be interchanged. That means the word swap will occur in the middle and thus we'll get the same pattern, uh, same zero defense patterns as alpha in the return plain text pairs. So essentially we start, uh, we take a uh, 23 plain text, um, a structure of 23 plain text. We query to the uh, encryption oracle with using the all plain text. We swap diagonals between two cipher text and then we query in the decryption oracle using the new cipher text. And we check whether the zero defense pattern for the new uh, plain text are equal to the uh, zero defense pattern of alpha or not. If this is the case, then we distinguish it as a 5 round AES. Now we extend the distinguishing attack of 5 round AES to a key recovery one. So we take only the last part of the attack, the last round of the attack. So we uh, guess here the key bytes and we see, we try to see. So once the right pair is obtained, we know that for the right pair, here only one byte will be active. Now we guess the key for uh, this last column and we check whether this difference transits to this kind of difference or not. If this is the case, we, we identify this as the right key candidate. And we repeat this process for all the four diagonals here and for all four columns here. And in this way, we recover the key for the 5 round AES. Now, the attack on 5 round AES is further extended to convert it into a 6 round uh, attack on AES. And in this attack, we uh, we prepend a round in the beginning. So we choose pairs of plain text with such kind of differences, and with probability to the minus twenty two, this difference will transition to this kind of difference, which only where only one byte will be active. So here it means that only one diagonal is active. That means one super S box is active here. Now. So, in the case, uh, if we consider here the zero defense pattern, it pattern should be 0, 1, 1, 1. Now, if the boomerang, if the five round boomerang attack from here occurs successfully here, so we expect here this kind of differences. So, this super S box will only be active here. Now, if all the bytes are active here, then this full state will be active and we will not be able to distinguish some, we will not be able to retrieve any useful information from here. But if this, if any of the one byte is inactive here, then this state, this pair of state will be useful for us. And this occurs with probability to the minus 6.4. And when this occurs here, the four bytes will be active in the output states. So uh, uh, the bytes will be uh, actually be related to each other. This should be a part of a diagonal. So it can be this diagonal, it can be this diagonal, it can be this diagonal. It essentially will not be this diagonal. Otherwise, uh, we'll not be able to recover the key. It will be very problematic for recovering the key if this diagonal is inactive. So the inactive diagonal should essentially be the diagonal which is not this one. Now, here we, uh, we retrieve such kind of pairs, but uh, as you can see, this, uh, the, uh, the pairs which will, uh, which will conform to this property will be such kind of pairs, but apart from that, there can also be random pairs. So we'll obtain a pool of right pairs and wrong pairs, and the right pairs will suggest the right key candidates, whereas wrong pairs will suggest the wrong key candidates and the right key candidates. Now, we have no way to distinguish the right key candidates from the wrong key candidates. And for that purpose, we have used the notion of signal to noise ratio. So what we do here, we take this difference here and uh, we guess the right key and uh, we guess the key, key candidate here and we see whether 
uh, four to one transition occurs or not. And we also do the same thing for the return plain text pairs and see whether four to one transition occurs or not. And if, if in the both sides such kind of transition has occurred, we we consider it as the candidate and key candidate. And for each key candidate guess, so for, if we are guessing for this diagonal, so there will be two to the thirty-two key guesses. So, so if if a candidate if a candidate guess each consider the, uh, if a candidate guess if a key candidate for a key candidate if both this kind of differential occurs here, yes, we increment the counter value for this key candidate. And in this way, uh, two to the thirty-two key candidate uh, counter value for the two to the thirty-two key candidates are maintained. So we expect for the right pair, the right the counter for the right pair will be among the top values. And uh, we found out that using the notion of signal to noise ratio to detect the right key candidate, almost ten right pairs are required here. Next, we mount the attack on ten non Falcos. So Falcos is a AES based tweakable block cipher, and its design strategy is quite similar to the ASK AES based permutation ASK. And uh, in this attack, uh, we have considered the 512 bit Falcos state, and uh, the 512 bit Falcos state can be considered as four parallel AES substates, which goes through two rounds of AES operations. And after two rounds of AES operation, its uh, column-wise permutations between the uh, different substates are operated, and the 512 bit AES has 20 rounds. And we have mounted the attack on Falcos, and which is quite similar to the attack on the six-round AES. And using the attack, we have been able to uh, do. Uh, we have been able to mount a 10-round attack on this cipher. And uh, again, here we have used the notion of signal to noise ratio. So these are the attacks that have been reported in this uh, work. So the five round attack on AES, six round attack on AES, and ten round attack on the Falcos cipher. So finally, uh, the concluding remarks here. So in this work, we have devised the generic strategy, which has embedded the yo within the boomerang, and we have shown the way of so visualizing the Watson operation as a combination of the S-box switch and the ladder switch, and our techniques have successfully mounted attacks on five round and six round AES and ten round Falcos, and we have verified the attacks on AES by implementing them on the mini version of AES, that is the 64-bit AES, and we expect that our attacks provides a better understanding of AES and AES-like surfaces. And there is a small corrigendum. So in our paper, uh, we have missed missed to cite our lemma one and lemma two. So in our paper, the lemma one and lemma two are actually the special case of theorem five and theorem six of this paper, the exchange attack paper by Sondre Ranjom and Bardde, uh, which was published in ASEC 2019. Finally, thank you.